Kelsey. Hey, I'm Shane McGalley. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Hourlings Podcast Project. Tonight, Dave's driving the bus. Dave, take it away. All right. Tonight, we're doing the ingredients of a good apocalypse story. Now, the thing is, I like apocalypse stories. It could be post-apocalypse. It could be trying to prevent the apocalypse from happening. It could be a lot of things. And, you know, I, I've read a lot of them over time. And, and, you know, so tonight's topic is basically what makes a good apocalyptic story. So I'm going to call out and say, I think the first thing you need is a believable apocalypse, like a plausible disaster of some kind. It doesn't matter what it is, but you need to have a plausible disaster. So, Marty, let's talk about plausible disasters that you might actually write about sometime or consider. Okay. Um, um, there is a metric ton of uh, zombie apocalypse uh, disasters. Uh, very common theme, very common story type. And uh, I've written stories in that genre myself, and it's very common and uh, has a lot of moving parts and a lot of places it could go. And, uh, and I love those. I've read a ton of them. All right, Shay? Um, I would disagree that you need a plausible apocalypse. Um, I think you could have a successful post-apocalyptic story that really requires you to suspend disbelief for the initial oomph to get into that post-apocalyptic setting. And then have a really, you know, interesting and well-written uh, story following that. I don't know how, I don't know how zombies can ever be uh, plausible, <laughs> you know. Um, so, you know, that's one example. You could have. But they're popular. They're popular, but they don't have to be plausible to be a good story. So I push back on that. Well, uh, but... another direction you could take your comment, Shay, yeah. is you don't even have to have a plausible explanation for the Yeah, you don't gotta know. Right. You take a, a, a book like The Road by um, Cormac, Cormac uh, what's that? Cormac, Cormac McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah. They never really state yeah. what was the cause of the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. And other, other stories like uh, there's this great book called One Second After. Um, it Not only do they explain what happened, it's a critical part of the plots for the story. Yeah, that was uh, One Second After by William Forston. Yeah, very great book. Very good book. So if I were to say what you do need, in my opinion, um, if not a plausible uh, apocalypse, I think you need really great, uh, humanist characters to support the story because if you have a world that is totally destroyed and you know, everything looks bleak, I think you've got to have some pretty heroic heroes and some pretty um, you know human driven uh, plots and, and a, a very humanist cast of characters um, to make it make it a worthwhile story, make it not a total depressing you know downer. I mean, it can certainly be dark. But you got to have your heroes. Well, I think every it can be story that too. we've ever discussed here is a prerequisite. It's got to have great characters, great plot, and a great setting. You know, uh, we'll we'll just grant that. And yes. uh, kind of what we're talking about here is uh, the plot and the setting uh, of of your apocalypse. Yeah, but I guess the only thing I push back in is say that um, you're right, Marty. Uh, but I think maybe what I was trying to say more is that, like, you can have really great stories in, like, maybe an urban fantasy setting where a lot of the characters are, like, really great villains and really, um, really great bad people. You know, like, sometimes they're, bad people are fun. But I think in a post-apocalyptic story, just my opinion, you can't have all of them be really bad and really, you know, shitty humans that are maybe fun to write about. You got to have some people who have, like, that, that hope. You know that we we just talked about hope punk last week. Um, so, you gotta have so you haven't seen Game of Thrones, have you? <laughs> I have, but there's some there's some good characters there that are you know. I, uh, I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, not, not so, I don't mean to debate so, this. So a couple things. Uh, you you can have a downer story. Uh, a last Babylon comes to mind, where uh, everybody uh, dies at the end of uh, the the ravages of nuclear war. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it was a caution, cautionary uh, tale. I think from a. I think from the 50s. Yeah, it was 
like 56. So I, like that, I think yeah. we're past the spoiler part. Okay. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Um, but I, I think it has to be believable in at least some fashion. Like I, I'm not sure you can do a, a post-apocalyptic story about uh, the earth being ro overrun by pink bunnies. <laughs> You could, you can, but no one would buy it. Yeah, yeah right. Um, I, I can think of some other ones. Uh, a Comet Hits the Earth. Uh, uh, that was done by uh, Larry Niven and Jerry Purnell in uh, Lucifer's Hammer uh, back in the 80s. Uh, and AI uh, uh, tries to take over the world. That was done in, for instance, The Terminator. Or A Plague Wipes Out Most of Humanity, uh, which was a, a great uh, book from the, the 40s, which is still in... in uh, uh, still in production, uh, uh, still in print uh, by uh, George R. Stewart called Earth Abides, about life after a plague wipes out most of humanity. Um, all right, so after after some sort of believable apocalypse, maybe we debate that a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, I think you need a genre of some sort. So let's talk about genres again. And we'll start with uh, Shay this time. Uh, well, I mean... I've seen I've seen it all. I've seen some uh, romance post-apocalyptic. I've seen some humorous post-apocalyptic. Um, some pure survival, you know, more like uh, War of the Flies type of post-apocalyptic. Um, they don't all have to be post-apocalyptic, though. I said apocalyptic, so oh. they, they could be before, during, or after. Well, I I think everything I said would still stand. <laughs> you know, I mean, even like it's true, it's true. It, the most recent the, uh, movie I can think of is uh, Don't Look Up, which was a comedy in the midst of an apocalypse. So, yeah. Or uh, I always liked The Warm Bodies, which was a zombie rom-com. Yeah, it's a good one. Actually, that yeah. was a book, a good, a good book before it was a movie. That was ridiculous. I loved it, though. I did, yeah. too. I, can't, I didn't love it. It was yeah. funny. I didn't love it. I, yeah. It's not a movie I I'd watch again. Um, Marty, his genre. Well, I, I, you know, like science fiction, and in science fiction, you got a lot of more uh, opportunities to uh, create apocalypses. You know, alien invasions. You know, the creation of a doomsday weapon, um, and uh, the stories can surround whether it gets used or. Oh my God! It's going. If we don't, you know, keep these radio dials turned right, it's going to be Cthulhu or whatever. Um, so I like science fiction, uh, apocalyptic movies. So I think. Oh, uh, actually, sorry, I'll let Shay go next. No, I did drive. Oh, you, you yeah. Um, so I think you can do all kinds of different genres. Uh, a lot of them tend to be modern day because uh, that's an easier sell as kind of a thriller. Uh, and people can sort of identify with, what if it happened today? Would I be one of the survivors or something like that? Uh, so Lucifer's Hammer, for instance, was a modern day, what would you do um, if the, the comet struck? Uh, and that covered before, during, and after the comet uh, struck. Uh, Earth Abides is mostly about how the people survive uh, after uh, civilization has basically broken apart. Um, but I've seen things uh, in the science fiction realm. Uh, again, Terminator is a pretty good example uh, of a, of a post-apocalyptic uh, story in the science fiction realm. Uh, I haven't seen a lot, for instance, in history. And I haven't seen a lot of fantasy, like epic fantasy uh, apocalyptic stories. I have yeah. seen some that are paranormal, like, uh, you know, close, close, the, uh, close the dimensional portal or else uh, Cthulhu's minions will take over the world, stuff like that. Uh, but I think genre is one of those ingredients that you have to figure out before you really start your story. You know, your comment made me think of something there, Dave. Um, I think, like, 50% of fantasy or sci-fi plots technically have an element of, of apocalyptic where they say, if we don't stop this bad guy, you know, he's going to do everything, you know, to the world. So it, it's almost like we right. have to define it. It's like Lord it of the Rings. Long. Yeah, like, we only have to... We gotta define it even a little more narrowly, otherwise it covers almost everything. <laughs> that, that could be true. Uh, certainly in the post-apocalyptic realm, I think that uh, the definition of post-apocalyptic is whatever came before 
is in some significant fashion gone and you have to build or, or survive in the in the ruins you have to build something else or survive in the ruins yeah terry brooks's uh shannara series <laughs> it's got a series of apocalypses that it happens in that if you take all of the books into account um and uh wandering through the apocalypse of a ruined society that was developed in the fantasy culture is just as interesting to me as a, you know, post-apocalyptic story set here. Yeah. All right. I think another decision you can make, and I've kind of alluded to this, is um, before, during, or after the apocalypse. So, Marty, why don't you take that? I like during. I like, oh my God, the big volcano is gonna explode in the, you know, the caldera. We have got to get out of Dodge now, and uh, you know, oh, we're all going to Greenland because they have seeds or whatever. And uh, that's a, a a good kind of story. The the thing when it's happening, you know, in the zombie apocalypse kind of story, you take, uh, you know. The outbreak has just started happening. You know, somebody, you know, dropped that vial in uh, a lab and suddenly you've got, you know, zombies just in the building and then they, they start expanding. I, that's the that's a, that's the timing I like. All right, Shay? I think I like after because um, you have a lot more flexibility to be creative with uh, anthropological questions, like how society will develop in a certain way, how things will change. Uh, when you have a during situation, it's very exciting, as Marty was saying, but you're dealing with our current uh, anthropological developments uh, and how we would deal with it now. I like imagining, like, you know, okay, it's already happened, so how did we get this new weird, you know, civilization order um, that, that's your plan of the apes? You know, how did that end up happening? Uh, you can just get really bizarre with it, and I think that's fascinating. Yeah, I, I can see some strengths to all of them. Now, before is a little bit more difficult. I, I've seen lots of stories that were before the apocalypse. Well, it's all about uh, preventing the nuclear war, which doesn't happen. So you really don't have the apocalypse because you you stopped it. Um, well, you take a story that, like 12 Monkeys. Are you familiar with the, that story? Yes. Time travel. They go yeah. back, a plague had hit, it was an awful apocalypse, and they don't know what the hell happened. So they send Bruce Willis back to find out. And see, that's what I was going to mention next, was Terminator is a good example of that, too. Where the apocalypse has happened in the future, and the time traveler has come back to stop it. So technically, you, you know what the apocalypse is going to look like, and you know the people that are trying to stop it. And the question is, have they done enough to do it? And, and that's part of the the, the tension part of the suspense. So you can do before, uh, but I, I feel like the weakness of a before story is the 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 lack of an apocalypse, unless you do something to, to show it anyway. Unless the like apocalypse the, happens. Unless, right. Um, you know, after, it could be the story is not how do we stop the apocalypse, it's just how do we survive? Yeah, and that's during, I mean, yeah, that's during. during is is oftentimes a survival story, which means it's exciting, but in some respects, a lot of the disasters are similar, and the way people survive are similar. So I feel like you have to do some stuff to differentiate there sometimes. Um, and then after, uh, I like, for instance, uh, Mira Grant did a, a trilogy, uh, the Feed trilogy. Um, about uh, zombies, but the story takes place 20 years after the zombie apocalypse. It's not a spoiler to say humanity has survived and they've figured out how to basically clear areas and live with zombies. The, the trilogy is really about how did it happen and who benefited, right? Right. Uh, and, yeah, and one of my favorite uh, stories that's in the same uh, uh, vein is uh, Bone Shaker, I think is the title of it. Yes. I can't remember the author. Terry Priest. Yeah, so another great story. This post-apocalypse, you know, they've learned to live with all of the, you know, breaks in the world. And uh, I love dirigibles. <laughs> Who doesn't? 
Yeah. Uh, another one, for instance, uh, um, feed is 20 years after. Another one that's uh, longer after would be something like a canticle for Leibowitz by, uh, um, what is it, Walter Miller? I think. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I think so. Um, where it's uh, it could be a thousand or more years after a nuclear war. And it's about the monks who are trying to keep civilization alive uh, as almost like a guiding light for, for future generations. Um, and that, you know, again, it's really not about the, the apocalypse happening. It's really about civilization surviving through the dedication of these monks. So I, I think before, during, and or after is something that one of those key ingredients you have to decide on for your story. Yep. All right. Going beyond that, I feel like most stories have some sort of key location. I won't say all, but most stories have some sort of key location. So, uh, Shay, let's talk about locations for your apocalyptic story. Yeah, I mean, I think that is important because if you have a, a recognizable location, like a, like a famous city or a suburb of a famous city, it's a very good way to signpost how things have changed. You know, um, I guess I'll go back to the Planet of the Apes. You know, we saw the... Uh, the uh, the Statue of Liberty, and so that tells us, okay, that was once New York. Um, or if you go to a, a, an example like uh, Fallout, the Fallout video games, very popular video games, um, they always they move location and they take place in different famous cities. So they've had Fallout Las Vegas. Um, I think they've had DC, and you can see how the monuments have been eroded. You can see how you know just things have changed. I do think that having a location with some recognizability. To our current uh, current locations helps the reader really get into what happened and get into this atmosphere and get into living in a post-apocalyptic or apocalyptic society. Uh, so yeah, very important. All right, Marty. Yeah, I, I also like having recognizable um, settings uh, for reference because then you can show differentiation. Okay, how how messed up is this? Um, you take a story like Waterworld, totally post-apocalyptic. Even in that one, he went underwater and saw the skyscrapers from New York City. And uh, uh, it, it gives everyone a reference on how how much water there was. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. So I think there's other things you can do. For instance, post-apocalyptic in New York City might be different than post-apocalyptic in a town where the town is trying to survive or the town is trying to not only survive, but prevent themselves from being overrun by, uh, by refugees because they can't feed all these people. Um, I think you could take advantage of the horror aspect of an apocalypse by setting something in the, in a space station. We have, um, you know, the aliens are invading or the, the and they're all contained in this right. room or whatever yeah the, the aliens destroyed the, mostly destroyed the space station we only have air for 20 people but we have 50 what are we going to do you know I, I feel like you can do some things with the the space uh, whatever whatever location you choose you might also have uh locations act as defensive fortresses um for example i, I i'm i have a post-apocalyptic romance and the defensive fortress is the hoover dam uh, and so, you know, using that as a location for, you know, a civilization to uh, buttress up, you know, safety walls and, and defend it um, can be very interesting if it's a recognizable uh, point. And there's some other interesting ones. Uh, Black Tide Rising, which is a series of books by uh, John Ringo, is a zombie apocalypse story where the, um, a bunch of survivors survived on boats out in the ocean. Uh, and then they started clearing other boats and, and started trying to figure out how to re reboot civilization, starting from uh, their bases on the ocean. Um, and I think Cormac McCarthy, since you mentioned them early, earlier, Marty, um, in, in his, the road is really the location. It's not any one particular location. It's the road itself. Yep. Uh, the next one. Okay, the, the Hoover Dam comment. Yep. Uh, have you ever seen the movie The Postman? No. Yeah, Tom Petty um, turned the Hoover Dam into a uh, uh, fortress. Cool. Uh, Tom Petty's awesome. Also May he rest in peace. 
It, it was a very good book by David Bren before it was a very poor movie by Kevin Costner. <laughs> I like the movie. Sorry, man. I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. And Waterworld. I'll say it. I said it. I like them both. All right. All right. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is theme. So I'm going to toss one, this one at you, Marty. Um, okay. A lot of uh, post-apocalyptic or, or a lot of apocalyptic stories will have some sort of theme. What kind of themes do you see uh, as a potential ingredient? Um, uh, themes as simple as love conquers all or um, the only way we're all going to, we're going to, uh, die alone or stand together um kind of themes um those are i would say be the most common um uh, if if that's what you mean by themes sure i, I think that i think those count uh shay uh redemption oh that's a good one actually yeah, yeah. that's been a part of many of the apocalyptic stories i've seen um, maybe some existentialism, you know, like, what is the meaning of humanity? You know, why are we here? Um, you don't often see, like, I guess, I, I, I can't think of an example right now, but, like, spiritual themes, like, you know, where the hell is God? <laughs> you know, you, I don't often see that explored. Um, but that's well, you take a, an apocalypse like the Stephen King book, The Stand. Oh, okay. That's really what that was all about. Yeah. Or, or the or the um what's the other one um the reaping or what's it called um the, there's there's a, a Christian belief that you know all the good people will be ri risen up and all the bad people will be left here so you know there's there, there's uh, stories like that too so yeah there is some of that okay I think you've got you guys have mentioned some very good uh, good themes I've also seen th seen things where. Uh, the theme might be just, it might be survival. Um, it might be rebuilding civilization. That's a very common one. Uh, and also, since you've broken the pattern, sometimes it's about rebuilding civilization in a different, possibly more fair fashion. Uh, it could be about simply saving humanity, making sure that humanity doesn't die. Um, that, that would be, for instance, the theme of Terminator. It's also the theme of, for instance, Earth Abides. Um, where so much of humanity died that they simply cannot uh, maintain any sort of civilization other than like uh, uh, a primitive, non-technical civilization. And so the, the book is heartbreaking because it takes you from civilization to, you know... Tribalism. To, to tribalism. But it, it's also hopeful because people have survived. Humanity has survived. It's just, you know, hopeful and heartbreaking at the same time. It, it's a wonderful book, and that's why it's still in print. Uh, so those are some of the themes I've seen. Uh, what other ingredients can you guys think of for a good apocalyptic story? Th that was my list. Well, I like heroes I, I and, and stories. I like uh, damsels in distress. You know, I like uh, romance in the setting of an apocalypse. You know, it's like, oh, damn, this is very inconvenient timing. And uh, then they kiss and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. There's there, there's a lot, a lot of goodness that you can uh, have in an apocalypse. Shay? Um, I like some creativity with, like, fuel and energy. You know, uh, how do they get it? You know, is it a, you know, what kind of, a, is it a, I would assume it's a very scarce resource at this point, and what kind of politics does that create that could be interesting? Um, and I also like seeing everyday items that we're used to being used in a different regard or different fashion in post-apocalyptic settings. I also like guns. Of course you Apocalypse, do. Apocalypse, guns. Yeah, I love them. I'd like to see some other things. So one of the interesting things about like apocalyptic stories, especially post-apocalyptic stories, is you know a lot of times they can be about the the super the, the almost superhuman uh, 
ex seal surviving, but those aren't really the stories I like. The ones that I tend to like are the ones about like real people. Like it turns out the librarian is, is a total badass woman. Yeah. Right? Or the clerk at S Mart. Or yeah. And he might not be the biggest, bulkiest guy, but he's the smartest when it comes to, uh, uh, to figuring out how to survive and stuff. So I, I kind of like to see some of these stories as the, as the triumph of otherwise ordinary people. Yep. Um, yep. And, and that really gratifies me a lot. <laughs> it's not always about somebody that, that looks like, uh, um, you know, Vin Diesel or, or uh, you know, some super built up, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger type uh, actor in Hollywood. Yeah, I always like the uh, trope where they're all sitting around this, the fire eating squirrel stew and somebody asks, so what were you before the shit hit the fan or whatever? And the guy invariably will say, I was a an accountant at H and R Block. <laughs> you know, that's uh I love that stuff. Yeah. So I, I and I, if there's another theme, I think it's it's you know kind of digging to the core of a of a person and finding out that there was something there that was un, was unexpected. Um those are the things that kind of throw me about these types of stories. Um with that, I, I think we've covered a lot of the ingredients of a good apocalypse uh story, whether it's before, during, or after. So to all of our viewers, I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, we will see you 